When we first learned the chain rule, it helped us take lots of derivatives. I want to look at some antiderivatives that involve the chain rule backwards. If, if you could recognize that you had the derivative of some function, and then you had a function inside of that, and then its derivative was multiplying dx, then you could tell that that was coming from the chain rule, right? And the antiderivative would be f of g of x plus any constant. We have some special cases there, like if the outside function was a power function. See, so the powers come down. We have the function of 1 power or less times the derivative of the inside. That's what usually happens if you take the derivative of some function to a power. Or here, when you're taking the derivative of e to some function of x, this is exactly what you get. You get e to the function times the derivative of the function that's up in the exponent. So we know we could go backwards by doing that. This is what natural logs look like, right? When you take the derivative of natural log, you get the derivative of the inside over the inside. So this will be the natural log of the absolute value of g of x plus some constant c. So those are kind of abstract formulas, but looks, let's look at a few cases where we could recognize what's happening there. Uh, here's one. We have our inside function sine, and then on the outside, we have the derivative of that multiplying dx. So we've got g of x inside the sine function, and then we have g prime of x dx. So sine must be the derivative of the outside function. So I'm going to guess, just by what I know about the chain rule, that this is the right answer. See, if you take the derivative of cosine, you get negative sine. So that would be sine. Evaluate the inside. So sine of sine times the derivative of the inside would be cos x. Yeah, that's it. Add any constant in there, and you've got the whole family. Or over here, let's see, we've got, there's a function x squared, and then its derivative is multiplying dx. So we're thinking, well, we've got e to the f of x times f prime of x, right? And we know that that integral should be e to the f of x. So we could guess that this is probably a solution, and then just check it. Take the derivative of e to the x squared. Yeah, you'd get e to the x squared times 2x, which is exactly what we have. Now, um, sometimes we can integrate by sight, but sometimes uh, the problem is so complicated that it's really hard for us to see, in which case it's nice to clean it up with a little substitution. So like in this one, when I had the antiderivative of the sine of the sine of x times the cosine of x, it looked like there was some chain rule stuff going on. What I could do to kind of clean it up a little bit would be to make a substitution. I have here sine x and its derivative, which is cosine, and its derivative is multiplying dx. And so that's a good clue that I should take uh, my, my u to be sine x. Now, my goal here is to rewrite this in terms of this variable u. So u is going to store all this complexity, and it's going to make the problem look a lot simpler. Now, if I've got to write everything in terms of u, I know I can turn the sine x into u. I'm also going to have to convert this dx so that it's a derivative, it's a differential in u. It's going to be du. If u is sine x, what would du be? Well, the differential would be the change in output. The change in output is the slope times the change in input. The slope of this function sine x is cosine x. So we have du is cosine x dx. So here's the pattern. We pick, we pick our substitution variable. Usually, that's the thing whose derivative is we can find multiplying dx. Then we calculate what the differential is. So we, we choose our substitution. And then we find the differential. And then our next step is going to be to rewrite the integral. So rewrite in terms of u. So if you get everything in terms of u, you'll have an integral with respect to u. Hopefully, that integral will be simpler. Like in this case, we have the sine of sine x, but u is sine x. And cosine x dx, that's du. So we're really talking about the integral of sine u du. Well, we know that that would be minus cosine u plus c. See how making this substitution made it cleaned everything up, and now the antiderivative is obvious? But um, u is something we made up. so. Whoever posed this problem to us is expecting an answer in terms of x, so we'll just have to substitute back. u is the sine of x, so we get the negative cosine of the sine of x plus c as our answer. So our last step here is to substitute back. Okay, 
So mostly the problem comes up in, in choosing what that substitution will be. But you're looking for some function that's present in the problem and its derivative happens to be multiplying um, dx here. So choose your substitution, find the differential. Right? You need that differential so that you can not only rewrite the things that involve u, but also the things that involve dx. So you find the differential, rewrite in terms of u. Once you get it in terms of u, hopefully it'll be a simpler integral. You just do the integral and substitute back. Let's see how that would work in this case. We have the integral of e to the x squared 2x dx. We have here x squared, and we notice that its derivative, 2x, is multiplying dx. So probably a good choice for u would be x squared. So we've chosen our substitution. The next thing is to get our differential, which would be 2x dx. And now I'll rewrite the integral. e to the x squared is now e to the u. 2x dx is du. The antiderivative of e to the u is e to the u plus c. And we just substitute back. That's our last step. Should have labeled that step four. Substitute back, we have e to the x squared plus c. And we're done. Let's try some more. This one you, you probably recognize. Look, we've got x squared minus 5x. Its derivative would be 2x minus 5 dx. This is just some power thing. So you might just, by sight, we'd say, so just integrate that. You say, oh, I can see, obviously, that the derivative of this would be that, just by your experience with the chain rule. But if you don't see that, that's OK. You could try a substitution. So if we look here, we've got x squared minus 5x. We've got its derivative multiplying dx. So that's a good clue that we should make u be x squared minus 5x so that du, the differential, will be 2x minus 5 times dx, sorry. OK, well now we can write this as 3u squared. 2x minus 5 dx is du. And the integral of 3u squared with respect to u would be u cubed plus c. So we just do the integral, and now we substitute back. u was x squared minus 5x, so we have x squared minus 5x cubed plus c. It's just maybe a, a more step-by-step -step or procedural way of getting to this answer. In this case, it was simple enough that we could recognize it just by sight. Here again, we recognize that we have a derivative of a function over that derivative. So it fits that pattern, derivative of function over function, which is what you have when you have the natural log of a function. So. So that fits that pattern, right? So this, this integral should be the natural log of the absolute value of x squared plus 3x plus c. We could also do that by a substitution. It would just make it clearer. We see we've got x squared plus 3x, and then its derivative is multiplying dx. So a good choice would be x squared plus 3x. Then the differential du would be 2x plus 3 dx. And then what's written here? you think about that dx as being dx over 1, we have 2x plus 3 times dx right there. So we have du over u. And that antiderivative is easy to recognize. That's the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. Just substitute back. Yeah. So using the substitution was just a more step-by-step -step or procedural way of finding that antiderivative. It's important to know, even if you can integrate most things by sight. It's important to know how to substitute because every once in a while you get some things that are a little more complicated. So we'll look at some examples of some more complicated in the next video.